I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's actually a net here that's tangled with herring trying to swim out of it. That's insane. Herring is still inside of it. Let's see if we can save it. <laughs> yeah, see, I think they, I think this thing's been here forever and they swam into it probably. Gill net style. Salvaged. Two days later. See that guy? You see that boat? Boo! In three, two, one, go! Oh no, he's got me on the hole shot! Oh, he's got that torque off the off the start! It's not how you start, it's how you finish, die hard! <laughs> I'll take you in a 10 foot range. Yeah. Other than that, that would be good. Well, all right. That's it. That's what happens when you go with an old town. You got a new port. All right, what is up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be targeting halibut. Not only halibut, the halibut from an electrified kayak. This is my Jackson Cuda HD, powered by the Newport Vessels NK180S 24 volt brushless direct drive, 60 pound thrust, AKA 1.8 horsepower trolling motor in the back. I have the controller here, got my two 35 amp hour batteries, lead acid uh, in the center between my legs and we are just cruising. We're at 2.7 knots right now and I'm gonna use this perfect time to not only enjoy the scenery, enjoy the lack of arm pedaling or kick pedaling and start rigging up. our fish finder rig set up here. I know a lot of you guys use uh, T-bars or three-way swivels. I have less tangles with this setup here. Fish finder rig with like an eight ounce torpedo weight or so um, to a I think two or three foot leader and your sliding rig setup. So let's uh, stick on a piece of herring and I'll show you how I rig it to ensure that it stays on and it spins correctly. I'm going to hook this guy behind the eyeball and that allows for a really kind of uh, secure setup there. And I'm going to take the trailer hook for the assist hook or the stinger hook whatever you want to call it lots of different names and we're going to make sure that it's seated kind of right in the tail area so I have these rubber bands these are actually my daughter's little hair bands going with pink and we're just gonna make sure that that rubber band is around the tail and the hook so this is important what you want to do is slide the rig down so there's a little bit of a bend, right? And this bend is what creates the spinning action that's going to imitate a dying bait fish um, and trigger a bite. So let's put it in the water and let's see what our spinning herring looks like. Oh yeah, it's spinning beautifully. And we've got our rod in the holder. You know, I'm seeing the tip bounce a little bit. I want to be uh, about 18 inches off the bottom, so I think what's happening is with my fish finder rig, the weight sinks, bounces, goes up, kind of hangs out there, and oh, look at that, we might have a fish on. Here, Sean. Oh, nice. Fish on. Oh, it's a halibut. Nice. Oh, that's a nice shaker. Yeah, shaker. They're here, they're here. Because these guys are so delicate, I don't want to even net them. Don't want to ruin him. So we're gonna do it the moo way. Quick pickup. Yeah, first fish on the Jackson. Sick. All right. Shakers for days out here, but that's a good sign. There was herring. There's herring in the system. So hopefully there's predatory fish right behind them. And that's uh, exactly what we're looking for right there. We just need their bigger brother. So you saw how I rigged it. You saw how, oh, the guy tried to bite me. Motor set to about one and a half miles an hour. Easy cruising day. Got our first, first fish on the new port. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's see if we can catch this bigger brother. Better guy. Oh. <laughs> 
feels decent. Whoa. Dang. Not nearly as, not nearly big enough, but probably the biggest one of the day. These guys go crazy when they hit the boat, so that's why I'm trying to be careful. Got his tail. There we go. See? See those chompers right there? California halibut, not the Pacific halibut. A lot of people consider these flounders, um, like East Coast flounders. And yeah, I guess I guess you could say that they're flounders. But uh, here, we call them California halibut. So we're gonna toss this guy, let him go. He's been out of the water long enough. And hopefully we'll catch you when you're bigger, buddy. Just like that, cool. That's uh, four strikes, two landed. That was probably, I don't know, maybe like four, maybe like 15, 16 inches. The, the one before that one that I landed was probably closer to 14, so we'll consider that a win. And that was with a relatively fresh herring that uh, made it into the stomach of a halibut. So happy to feed some. Hopefully we can get a keeper one. change depths. Nothing was happening in the shallows, so I dropped down right on line with where the other fish were being caught. And what do you know it? Instant drop, instant bite. Let's go. There we go. Whew. And halibut number three on the deck. So <laughs> what I was saying was Basically, I was in the shallows and uh, nothing was happening. So these guys tend to kind of school up at the same depth. And so my theory that these fish would be stacked shallower chasing the herring isn't correct. So I came back to what I knew and I've been marking the fish that I've been catching like this guy. Let's, let's get him back in the water. Uh, I've been marking these guys all day, kind of in uh, this, uh, a certain depth and I want to stay in line with that depth because that's what's working. So as soon as I sent it down, I got bit. Um, another cookie cutter one, probably the smaller one that I've gotten on the deck today. And uh, he basically gave me back my bait. So I'm going to repack it, make sure it's spinning nice, it's nice and shiny, uh, has its shape, and that's pretty much all you need. So let's send it back down and see if we can pick through some small ones and catch uh, a keeper one. That's the one we're looking for. Was your fish that way? Over there? Oh, okay. Oh, fish on. Fish on, Adam. Yep. Oh, and I got my bait back. Alright. Okay. I'm becoming a pro at catching shorts. Bite number six. Halibut number four on the deck. Probably one of the smaller ones. And uh, let's measure them actually. I haven't. <laughs> world class handling here. World class fish handling skills. <laughs> Wet the board so you don't damage them any further. But I haven't measured one yet today. I kind of want to see how big these guys are. This is on the smaller side. And uh, let's see, mouth closed, tip to tip about 14 and a half or so so yeah the, the biggest one I caught today was probably closer to 18 so we'll let this guy go bye little bro there he goes so got to have a measuring device uh, on board to make sure that your fish is 22 
Man, a lot of shakers today. Got my bait back, so that's a good thing. And uh, we'll keep plugging along and see if we can actually get a keeper. Still early in the season though. All right, well, nothing on the troll back in. I think that's about it, but first time putting fish on the electric kayak, the uh, Jackson Kuna HD Power by the Newport Vessels NK180S. Pretty cool to get slime on the rig finally. And man, you know, for trolling in the bay, I have to say, having an electric setup is pretty sweet. Regardless of where I am in the bay, I know that I can zip there at five miles an hour. And, uh, you know, staying nice and tracked at a consistent speed is pretty cool. You know, between my GPS and my power unit here that controls the speed of everything, I can really dial in uh, exactly where I want to be. And uh, I have the freedom to, to just hang out and watch everything kind of do the work for me. So I know a lot of your purists probably don't consider this really fishing or kayak fishing, uh, but you know what? It It is, and it's pretty cool. It's a different style of fishing. Definitely more relaxed and a great day on the bay. Six bites, four fish landed. Uh, that's the most I've ever done on my kayak, I think, or a kayak. So very early in the season, the herring are in, right behind it, predatory fish, and uh, more to come. So thanks again for watching. If you guys are interested in the NK180S, link in the description again. And uh, if you guys want it, 10% off, use my code ISHWITHFISH, and uh, you can get a complete setup, including two lead acid batteries. If you buy those separately, uh, for probably like 900 bucks, which is way less than a lot of the other electric options out there. So thanks for spending your time with me, and I'll see you in the next one.